Hello, people. Uh, there is still no update for us to play with uh, from Michael Giuliano just yet from the developer. He's been, uh, but he has been hard at work, and uh, I'm like, if you have seen any of my other videos, I hope you have at least seen this other one where I showcase the flying fox and its interior and all that stuff. I'm like, that's. I'm like, this man is is a one-man army, is it? and this whole project is kind of been a like he's been doing all the work himself. He's received help with the uh, awesome sound effects and some uh, aid with the creative writing of the story for this game. But other than that, he's been he's been handling all of this stuff with the uh, coding and programming, all this stuff, all by himself. And this is a real physical simulator, a physics simulator, because you got all these free bodies flying around, orbiting, and. I, I, I'm like, I, I've been studying physics, I've been uh, writing physics simulations, and I, and I know that stuff, if you if you make those kind of programs, it, you, you will have weird bugs and unexpected results, and sometimes, you know, you don't necessarily have a bug, but stuff behaves in a way you didn't expect them to do. I'm like, especially in this kind of setting, I think I mentioned this before, that there are these really weird transfer orbits you can make with these uh, like branch points and stuff like that I'm like how, how on earth should you debug that kind of thing you can't it's, so it's, a, it's a really is a is a rather difficult task that he's uh, he's uh, handling here Michael so really credits to him but like I said well we don't have anything uh, I, I don't really have anything to showcase this time only I thought I would show you some further manipulations of the orbits around your around celestial bodies. So if I just uh, time accelerate a little bit forward, we can uh, quite clearly see that we're rotating in this direction. Well, really in this direction, indicated by this reticle. And uh, for us to be able to do this, we have to we have to clearly understand what these reticles mean and what they do. I think I've already gone through this, but I'll just go through them in there once more. Not not only because uh, you might need a reminder, but also because I, I, I feel like I understand them a little bit better myself now as well. So, first of all, we have the forward reticle. The forward reticle looks like this, and it's uh, pointing in the, our current direction of travel, and in the opposite direction is the backwards reticle. These are called retrograde and prograde vectors. Pro, prograde for forward and uh, retro for backwards. It's just like, I, I hope you can figure out the, uh, the meaning of those pro and retro yourselves. And then there's the uh, inwards re uh, inward pointing vector, the vector which kind of it's, it's always these in this one and the one uh, in the opposite direction are always at 90 degrees to the to the uh, prograde and uh, retrograde vectors they don't always necessarily point towards the body which you're orbiting you see this round reticle shows us where the gravitational attraction of this this celestial body is pulling us and well, it's presumably pointing uh, straight into the middle of the planet, right uh, straight into the planet. But the the radial inward vector does not align with this gravitational pull reticle. So those two are not always necessarily the same. I mean, like if we're if our prograde vector is pointing uh, straight away from uh, this moon, the uh, radial in vector would, I'm like, they would be pointing in either in this or that direction, so, yeah. And then there's, of course, the radial outwards vector, which is uh, exactly opposite in its direction, as opposed to the uh, radial inwards vector, okay. 
Now, there are two more vector reticles. These are the the normal and the antinormal vectors. Yeah. Now, the normal is let's see here if we put ourselves in is this one as you can see if we want if we place ourselves in a normal alignment attack alignment we the autopilot puts us makes us face straight in this direction and th this is the space station by the way if you wonder normal and anti-normal how the heck do you tell which is normal and which one is anti-normal now this is basically indicated by your current spin around the planet and um, it's it's easiest if you're already a physicist and if you're familiar with the right hand rule basically if you're your if you curl your th fingers your 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 index to your pinky finger to to make a fist but stick your thumb straight out upwards like you're making a thumbs up basically then the direction in which your fingers curl if that is the same direction in which you're going around the planet like if you, you can uh, we cannot go in this direction is kind of the same direction your fingers would be traveling if you curled them into a fist then the thumb points in the normal in a normal direction and if we uh, make a thumbs down, that's like saying that we're going in the opposite direction, and uh, and uh, that makes it so that our normal vector points downwards. The direction of the normal vector changes depending on in which direction we're orbiting a celestial body. So that's slightly tricky but it's it's a consistent rule which uh, doesn't really depend on many other things other than you being right-handed I guess like if you're left-handed and if your left hand is your I mean, like if your left hand is your dominant hand this might seem a little bit awkward but yeah never mind so in order to change inclination of your orbit you would face either normal or anti-normal anti-normal directions and you would apply a thrust there now what do i mean by changing your inclination now see where our orbit is horizontal and well kind of horizontal i guess you could call it but it's it's parallel to this galactic disk uh, like the the this galactic horizon, this Milky Way looking thing is 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 the galaxy in which we're currently in. And if we apply a thrust in the, for example, in the normal direction, you will notice that. notice that it will start to change this the direction of the normal vector let's do this and do some time acceleration Notice that our uh, forward direction is pointing upwards. That this is to say that our orbit is now on a tilt or slanting, really. Oops, it easy. So what we have done, we haven't really changed our orbit very much. I'm like our 
priapses and apoapses were roughly 800 kilometers before we started doing this inclination change and it still is roughly 800 on both values and the only thing we've done is that we're now traveling like a slant like this rather than traveling like this parallel to the to the galactic plane really now obviously if you align yourself to the antinormal direction and you apply another thrust in that direction we will Then align ourselves for the forward direction again. Let's see here, and if I can just do it like this. You can tell that we're kind of um, traveling parallel to the galactic arm again. The reason why we're not doing that, we're actually still on an inclined plane, is because we have traveled up towards uh, the North Pole or of this moon and only then did we start to rectify our orbital incline to straighten it. We can't really straight, uh, have it absolutely parallel to the galactic plane as, as of now because we need to go down lower so that we're just above the equator, equatorial line of the planet. Anyway, since the flux drive is so powerful, you wouldn't usually, you usually don't need to use this these kind of manipulations that often. Like if we, uh, if we just, hmm, uh, let's see here, where's our little friend? Ah, oh, there. If we want to do travel towards this space station and dock with it, we wouldn't really be be uh, changing our uh, inclinations and uh, do a lot of uh, small adjustments to our orbit and stuff like that we wouldn't really need to because the flux drive is so powerful which you could just uh, thrust straight for it for this thing and then and then decelerate as we approach to ensure we don't crash with it and that would be it we wouldn't we don't really uh, need to do all these nifty little things but then again since uh, all components are in spaceships will be able to break down they will be able to malfunction and you can be stranded out in outer space with no flux drive basically it is possible that you might need to use the regular thrusters these humming thingies and you would need to do all these little intricate maneuvers then again, in real life, in our modern day, you wouldn't usually uh, make these kind of normal and anti-normal thrusts because they are so costly, they are really, really fuel inefficient. You would rather like to, like to launch your vehicle in a particular direction while you're still on, below in the Earth's atmosphere so that you get a head start when you try to to uh, break free from the gravitational pull of the earth and then orbit the body all right and that was really all i wanted to say guys so um thank you for watching